All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Monroe. I can't do it today. I'm so tired. I've been so focused on meetings all day. All right. Last outtake. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Monroe Live. Today, we're going to be covering the Genesis GV60. So if you don't know, the Genesis GV60 is on the eGMP platform. So that's the Electrified Global Modular Platform, which is also the same platform that the Ionic 5 was that we tore down not too long ago. So Eric's probably panning over to the A-frames so you can see over there. So um, contrary to a normal video, I'm not going to go is as in depth and the whole underbody and kind of a review of this vehicle, but rather I want to compare and contrast a few things and show you some of the decisions this OEM made from a cost perspective. Now, from a costing perspective, from a weight perspective, from a design perspective, these are the things that if you're unaware that Monroe actually focuses on, right? We do the videos and it's fun to take a look at some vehicles and jump on Monroe Live for a little bit, but really and truly what we're doing on the day-to-day, -day, right, for our clients is we're looking for cost reduction opportunities while not sacrificing performance. We're looking for mass reduction opportunities. We're looking for true uh, novel or just iterative improvements and changes that they can deploy on their vehicle to improve their bottom line and ultimately make more money as a company while not sacrificing things for the customer. Yes, in some cases, right, we get to a point where the OEM's got to make some tough decisions, right? You can't eat your cake and have it too in every instance. But really, a lot of customers come to Monroe to help navigate those waters, meaning what are folks doing competitively? What are we seeing in the marketplace that's really advantageous um, to them and their application or not, right? What are some things that we see trending that we don't believe are perhaps a good application or uh, a good thing for that particular vehicle or program to execute on, um, depending on, on what they're looking at. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out a couple of things, right? We've got some parts laid out on the floor here, but um, let me give you a, a brief kind of grounding and what we're seeing on the underside of the vehicle here. So at the front end, we've got the subframe. So it's a stamp steel welded front cradle. Um, it's hard mounted. It's mounted at six points from the subframe to the body in white. Uh, so when I say hard mounted, there's no elastomeric mounts, right? Rubber uh, components between the bolts, the cradle and the body. And so what that's really doing is that's making this a structural contributor or monument relative to the holistic body structure. So it's supplementing the body in white, the stamp steel, the sheet metal. Um, so in, in some instances, depending on the application, right? A lot of front wheel drive architecture vehicles will do isolated front cradles, you know? So there's kind of a mixed bag of what you'll see. But this cradle is quite substantial. It's hard mounted, so it's contributing to the body structure. Um, and, and it is just, I'll say, flat out large. Moving to the outboard side of the vehicle, we've got a aluminum knuckle, two aluminum lower control arms, and the suspension architecture on this particular vehicle is a McPherson strut, meaning there's no upper control arms, but rather just a coilover system, right? It's a proper strut. And then there's the two lower control arms. So it's not just a regular McPherson strut though. It is a McPherson strut with a virtual lower ball. So in some of the other videos that we've done where we've looked at vehicles, I think maybe Lucid was one of them. Um, I know I just looked at a Lyric the other day, a Cadillac Lyric. It had a different version of a virtual ball system. Really what that is referring to is the, the straight line geometries that make up a suspension architecture and what that means in terms of the contact patch and the way loads distributed within a given suspension system. By going to virtual ball, what that means is, is typically in a suspension system, and I'm gonna pull the Ionic here, right? This is kind of speaking to that contrast. The Ionic had a single lower control arm here with one bolt-in ball joint that attached to the knuckle. This same platform, but different trim level vehicles got a virtual ball lower, which means that in essence, they're, they're able to take these two straight lines, right? If I, so if I were to draw a straight line between this connection point and the ball joint, this bushing point and this ball joint, 
you, you would see if those two straight lines went together, they would not yet intersect. Those ball joints keep them separated. But if you were to continue projecting out that line in space, they would connect somewhere out here, right, in the middle of the wheel. And so what, the, what they're actually doing, what that chassis engineer is doing, is he, is he is manipulating and changing the relationship of the load, right, that's gonna be put upon this tire and based on the vehicle, right? All this is coming down, right? He's gonna modify and manipulate the way that this, the, all the kinematics of the suspension corner are set up. Typically, by getting the, that connection point or that virtual ball joint, that's what, hence virtual ball, um, you're gonna get some better driving dynamics and characteristics out of that, right? Some wheel scrub benefits and so forth. And so that, that's what they're doing here. So when we're contrasting to the Ionic 5, you would say, well, if it's the same platform, why did, it, why did they not do it on both? Well, they're trying to be budget friendly with the Ionic 5, whereas this higher price point vehicle, perhaps different customer, they're saying, okay, it's one, of the, it's one of the technical things that the customer is actually receiving as a benefit. The rest of the suspension, architecture, battery, right, is largely the same. If you were to kind of blindfold me and then take the blindfold off and walk under the two vehicles side by side, you'd be kind of hard pressed unless you already kind of knew these differences going under them to tell the two apart. They're very, very similar. Um, but this is one of those technical items that, that you're seeing um, Hyundai Kia deploy on their more premium trim level. The balance of the things that you're quote unquote paying for as a consumer are gonna be left for the cabin. They're gonna be in the seats, the infotainment, the creature features that really give you that sense of opulence, et cetera. But from a technical perspective, um, they're very, very similar, okay? So when we talk about cost reduction, you might say, well, is it just the steel versus aluminum? Yes, that's part of it. But a big part of the cost, right, as they're making these decisions are these ball joints, right? So the aluminum, yes, it's more expensive part to part or material for material, um, but also these ball joints are quite costly. And not only that, now you're going to have an operator that needs to separately install these. So when we talk about total accounted costs, it's not just the cost of the bill of material, meaning how much I, as the OEM, am paying for a given control arm or a given part, but it's really how much time am I paying? How much time am I paying for in my final assembly line and my supplier assembly line to bring all of these components together? Right? OEMs, unless you're buying parts in the aftermarket sense, they don't sell you parts. They sell you a vehicle. So you need to account for all of that labor. It's part of the package. So they're paying for more labor on this version. They're paying for a more expensive material, and they're certainly paying for an additional ball joint. But the trade-off there is they're getting getting a benefit dynamically in terms of the way that the vehicle's handling. So not, not only in the control arm and the ball joints are they receiving a cost reduction. The other thing that you'll notice is if I look at the knuckles and I orient them in the same direction and setup, you'll notice bottom of knuckle, right? This is the knuckle to the bottom of knuckle. I want you to key in right here, right? This is where the other ball joint, right? I'll flip it over so you can see. That's where the ball joint on the Ionic 5 goes in. On the GV60, you'll notice that it's got substantially more material in order to receive those ball joints. So you start adding these things up, which means more unsprung mass, a bigger machine surface, two machined holes, right? So it's actually a fair bit of cost add to do what they did here. Yes, they could have done this with steel and they could have done some different things, but in doing, in adding more ball joints, you're adding more weight. And where you don't wanna add weight is an unsprung mass, meaning outside of what the springs are carrying on the vehicle. Not all mass is considered equal. You start adding weight in the wheel, it's a lot more to manage. They may have had to change out springs. There's a lot of other things that are tied to that. So what, what you're seeing here is a, as far as, changes that can be executed within a platform. This is about as simple as it gets, right? Some, some folks, uh, some OEMs and some platforms get very extravagant about how you manipulate a body structure, what you consider air quote common, right? What's carried over from what, one platform to another. But this is an example of where it's quite simple. It makes sense, right? Because there's a benefit to the customer. It's not just purely technical in, in a manner where it's just kind of kind of go uh, unseen by the customer. There's some realized value there. Now, 
if <laughs> depending on the consumer, right? Would the consumer ever know that per se? No, not necessarily. But at the end of the day, I think it allows Hyundai Kia to, to tout better marks in terms of ride and handling. Um, and if you're really paying attention, you will feel some difference, right? As the driver more than likely. So just kind of wanted to take a minute and, and highlight something, right? Given that we ha have two vehicles here that are on the same platform, because I think we throw the word out often, right? Oh, it's on the same platform. Oh, it's on the same, you know, uh, product line, all these different things, right? And different architecture, we use these words, but this is one of those areas where it's very clear to see what an OEM did to change something. So I wanted to point that out. I'll be honest, the rest of the vehicle, I, I would defer you to the, vi the video that we did on the Ionic 5, very, very similar. They got a composite lower closeout for the battery. They've got exu extruded side sill members, right, to help from that side impact perspective. And then the rear suspension is quite conventional um, by all standards in that mostly stamped and welded um, links. It's a multi-link rear suspension, separate springs, sh separate shock absorber. Uh, and then obviously the, the rear cradle is pretty large, but it's all isolated, which is commonplace, right? It's more typical that uh, an OEM, in fact, most OEMs who have BEVs in the marketplace today in the passenger car world do isolate the rear cradle. So that's, that's quite commonplace. The, the one thing that we did mention on the, that we saw in the Ionic 5, which is also seen here on the GV60, which I thought was quite cool at the time, um, is this. So you might be like, well, what, the half shaft? Well, yes, but this particular half shaft, if you look on the outboard side, there's a little ring right there. What that ring is, is it's a connection point and it's a um, structural monument within a full assembly. The full assembly on this half shaft actually incorporates the wheel bearing. So I'm sure Eric can throw up a wheel bearing on the, on the video for you so you can take a look at what I'm talking about. But the wheel bearing on this vehicle is actually integrated into the half shaft. So back, back here when we were talking about the labor, the number of steps it takes to uh, bolt something together, the operator, the amount of machining, et cetera, et cetera. All of that is in one single monument. So they load the half shaft and voila, your, your wheel bearings in place as well. Yes, they still got to run the bolts, but in terms of managing that extra part, uh, it doesn't really exist on this. So pretty cool to see. I know we saw the same thing on the Ionic 6, I believe, but they swapped front to rear. So on the Ionic 6, they did it on the front and this particular platform variant, right? The Ionic 5 and the GV60, they do it in the rear. And I don't believe they do it in the front. Nope, looking at the front, it's a conventional half shaft. So to contrast for you, you can take a look here. You can, you can see essentially the full extent of the hub, right? It doesn't just sort of disappear into the knuckle and you're not seeing that ring around the outside of that socket in the same way that we are in the rear. So maybe we'll pull some, uh, some parts for you. So all in all folks, um, we won't spend too much more time on the GV60. It's kind of cool to, to get it in. I know uh, we're gonna be driving it around quite a bit. So obviously more to come in the other reviews to look at the interior and again, to see what that customer is actually getting by paying a premium for a GV60. But uh, hopefully the platform tidbits were a little bit uh, insightful or interesting. So thank you so much. If you want more information or you're curious about uh, potential projects with Monroe or anything along those lines, feel free to reach out at sales at leandesign.com. Thanks.